So in my humble opinion, every good pagan channel needs at least one Wheel of the Year episode. Winter Sonkind. So today I am going to be discussing the modern neo-pagan Wheel of the Year. So the Wheel of the Year is a cyclical calendar that reflects the changing seasons and the corresponding festivals celebrated by the various indigenous cultures across the world. In the Southern Hemisphere, the seasons are obviously reversed compared to the Northern Hemisphere, which means that the Pagan Wheel of the Year is celebrated differently. The Wheel of the Year finds its roots in the practices of indigenous cultures from all around the world. It represents a deep understanding of the cyclical nature of time and it shows us the interconnectedness of humanity with the natural world. The wheel consists of eight Sabbaths and each festival marks a specific point in the solar year. The festivals also honor the changing seasons and hold spiritual significance associated with each phase of the annual cycle. And like the so in Europe, people such as the Celts and the Germanic tribes and all of the pre-Christian societies recognized the importance of nature's cycles and the connection between human life and the changing seasons. Through observation and reverence for the natural world, they established rituals and festivals to honor the cycles of birth, growth, harvest and renewal. It is very important to note that similar concepts of cyclical time and seasonal celebrations are found in indigenous cultures from all over the world. For example, the First Nations peoples of the Americas have their own seasonal calendars and sacred ceremonies that align with the cycles of nature. And also the Aboriginal people of Australia also have rich traditions and ceremonies tied to the changing seasons. In South Africa, it is no different. The indigenous cultures of this country have long recognized the importance and the cel has celebrated the changing of the seasons. It seems that all indigenous cultures everywhere in the world at some point recognized the importance of living in harmony with Earth's natural cycles and rhythms. Um, while specific festivals and practices may differ, the underlying principles of honoring nature's cycles and offering gratitude and celebrating renewal remains consistent. Life's wheel. So the modern version of the Wheel of the Year that is often used in neo-paganism draws inspiration from ancient pagan traditions, particularly those of indigenous Europeans. In the mid 20th century, figures like Gerald Gardner and Dorian Valiente played significant roles in reviving and popularizing the concept within the framework of modern pagan and Wiccan practices. They drew upon historical references and folklore and some of their own interpretations to create a cohesive and accessible system that reflects the seasonal cycles and the spiritual significance of nature. This modern adaptation incorporates elements from various indigenous European cultures while also incorporating contemporary interpretations and personal insights from practitioners. As a result, the modern Wheel of the Year, as is popular today, is a dynamic and evolving concept that continues to resonate with those seeking a deeper connection with the natural world and its cycles. Please note that there are other year wheels that form part of heathenry and Ashatru and Norse paganism that have their own system and their own dates and I won't be discussing these. One of the first things you learn to do as a Southern Hemisphere pagan practitioner is to flip your wheel of the year. Why? Because the distinct seasonal patterns in the Southern Hemisphere bring a unique flavor to the wheel of the year and pagan practices in the region. 
Paganism in the Southern Hemisphere acknowledges and adapts to the reversed seasons, aligning its celebrations and rituals with the natural rhythms of the land. For example, the traditions of the Celtic fire festivals of Imbolc and Beltane, Lugnasa and Sawen are shifted to different months of the year so that they can correspond to the local seasons. This adaptation allows Southern Hemisphere pagans to connect deeply with the cycles of nature in their region and honour the specific qualities of their environment. The Wheel of the Year in the Southern Hemisphere reminds practitioners to attune themselves to the natural world and to forge a strong bond with the ever-changing and diverse landscapes of this region. It is an invitation to embrace the unique magic of the Southern Hemisphere and to cultivate a deep connection with the land that we call home. So let's look at what the Wheel of the Year looks like in the Southern Hemisphere. But before we get into dates, I would like to share a little bit about where I start and end my year. So as we all know, very famously, Samhain is considered the Celtic or the Witch's New Year. But I put it to you that since we're working with circular time, where do things really begin or end? I put it to you that you can start wherever it makes sense for you. And for me, I like to start at the winter solstice, which is the birth of the sun. There is no time. The winter solstice starts the journey, usually celebrated on the 21st of June traditionally or astrologically when the sun is at zero degrees cancer. The winter solstice represents the longest night but also the rebirth of the sun and symbolizes hope, renewal and the return of light amidst some of the darkest nights. Imolk is next, usually celebrated traditionally on the 1st of August or astrologically when the sun is at 15 degrees Leo. Imolk marks the beginning of spring. It symbolizes creativity and the awakening of the land and also the anticipation of new growth. Next up is the spring equinox or also called the vernal equinox. This is celebrated traditionally around the 21st of September or astrologically when the sun is at zero degrees Libra. The spring equinox signifies the balance of light and darkness, but also fertility and the celebration of Earth's awakening as it transitions into a period of growth and renewal. Beltane is next. Traditional dates for Beltane is the 31st of October, or astrologically, it is at 15 degrees Scorpio. Beltane represents the height of spring, honoring fertility and abundance and the union of the masculine and feminine principles often celebrated with maple dancings and bonfires. Following Beltane, we get the summer solstice, celebrated around December the 21st traditionally or astrologically when the sun is at zero degrees Capricorn. The summer solstice marks the longest day and the shortest night of the year. It symbolizes the peak of summer and the power of the sun and the celebration of abundance and vitality. Next up is the festival of Lugnasa. This is celebrated around February the 1st traditionally or astrologically when the sun is at 15 degrees Aquarius. Lugnasa commemorates the first harvest. It also shows gratitude for the earth's bounty and the recognition of our efforts and skills as we reap the rewards of our labor. Now we come to the autumn equinox, which is celebrated traditionally on March 21st or astrologically when the sun is at zero degrees Aries. The autumn equinox signifies once again the balance between light and darkness, but also the gathering of the harvest and the expression of gratitude for the blessings received throughout the year. And so finally, bringing up the tail end of the year, we find the festival of Samhain, traditionally celebrated on April the 30th or astrologically when the sun is at 15 degrees of Taurus. Samhain marks the end of the harvest season and also the beginning of winter. It honors the ancestors and we find ourselves reflecting on mortality and embracing the cycle of life, death and rebirth. And so there you have it. 
the Wheel of the Year originating from indigenous European cultures is a testament to the universal human connection to nature and to the cyclical nature of time. It highlights the shared understanding among indigenous cultures worldwide of the importance of honoring the seasons, the cycles and the spiritual significance of the natural world. By exploring the traditions associated with the Wheel of the Year in the different cultures of the world, we can gain deeper appreciation for the wisdom and reverence our ancestors and indigenous communities around the world hold for Earth and her cycles. Thank you so much for joining me today as we looked at the Pagan Wheel of the Year as it is celebrated in the Southern Hemisphere. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please consider giving it a thumbs up and also subscribing to my channel for more content like this. I hope to see you again here next week as I start a more detailed journey through the Wheel of the Year. From 18th of June 2023 and onward for six weeks, I will be making and sharing Winter Solstice specific content so that we can all learn more about this magical time of the year together for the whole season. And so until next week, Actuario Nuskirig, Actuario Verwondert, Actuario Plesirig, Actuario Nou Verandert. Gathers the grain, she eats the cane and gathers the grain. My bones grow full, so winter be cold. She wraps her cloak around to be cold. For she will bring the birds in the spring, and she will bring the birds in the spring, and summer's heat her flowers sweet. My light just flickered.